Okay, hello, hello. <laughs> yod, yod. What's up? Oh, we got the jazz emote. Very nice. How are we doing, everybody? It's Monday. It's a holiday for some. For me, it's just another day. Hope everybody's doing good, whether you had a holiday today or not. So what I'm going to do here today is just a uh, sort of a close-up shot of uh, Sunstreaker. I don't have anything, I didn't have a sketch plotted out or anything, so I'm just going to do kind of a, uh, a bust shot here and see how it goes. Friend, hello, you had a holiday from lab work, that's good. Did art work, even better. Productive day, clock fox, very nice. Hello, Goober Art, Zombie Prowl, Allodromo, I keep thinking it's Sunday. So, here we go, I want to give, uh... hey, what's up, Daimuch, Josh Perez, superstar. Work in art as usual. <laughs> My focus goes kind of in and out as I uh, do the pencil sketch here, so apologies for that. So I just want to give him a little, little attitude here. He's going to kind of have his head cocked to the side a little bit. Artaholics, very nice. Let's see, shoulder. So he's kind of, his body's facing the side here. His head's turning to face us. His body is kind of sideways. So here's one shoulder here, other shoulder back here. I'm going to have to look up the character model to make sure I get this right. But I want to have sort of his arms folded here. I'm going to have his fingers. Let me move the paper up a bit. Fingers coming over the edge of the arm here. He's usually pretty um, self-confident, shall we say. Hello, Serenth, 12. So Sonny's got, he's got his uh, little motor thing on his back and he's got his kind of weird ear thingies. They're not actually ears, but things coming out the side of his head. So give me just a second, I'm gonna Google his character model here. テイリーは客列に看板しろ。I forgot about his little, uh, his weird things on top of his shoulders there. So, his G1 model is extremely simplified, so I'm going to, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I'm going to complicate it a little bit. I'm kind of used to drawing him in his, um, is it Universe mold? Uh, the one they used in the IDW comics, starting with, uh, All Hell Megatron. I think that's universe, but I don't know, chug, I guess people would call it. Oh, 
スは揃っていい素質を持っていますそれを貸し切ってもなおブランカさんあなた方は俺たちの指揮を低下させるために来たんですかああ、oh, wow. なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。なるほど。Tilted up at an angle, and you can see I'm just hopefully you can see I'm just kind of loosely plotting out the、uh, eyes, the nose, get the cheekbones in there. He's gonna have a little bit of a smirk on his face. Got a、uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong piece. That's fun. Let's see, this will go up a little bit higher here. The sketch phase is always fluctuating. I notice a lot of、uh, you know, artists when they're, they're just starting out, they want to put the lines, they want to go right to the hard lines, the finished lines. And you really, even people that have been doing this for what seems like forever, usually got to spend a decent amount of time sketching and kind of figuring out exactly where everything's going to fall before, before you can really commit. To the lines you're putting down. Sideswipe or Sunstreaker, which one's my favorite?、Um, I mean, I guess I wouldn't, I don't think I necessarily have a favorite of the two, but if I had to pick one, Based on just probably the figures that I have, I would say a sideswipe because I, I happen to have a few sideswipe figures, including his、uh, masterpiece figure, one of the few masterpieces that I actually have.、Um, but, you know, no, that's nothing against Sunstreaker. Just kind of who I happen to have. Let's see. Yep, start with a good foundation. Yeah, how about let's, let's put that question out to the, to the group? Who, if you have to pick、uh, one of the two Lambo twins, who, who's your、uh, preference? G2 sideswipe. Yeah, that, that puts a different wrinkle in there. There wasn't a、uh, G2 sunstreaker, was there? I'm sure somebody's done it at some point, but as far as like toys, was that? That must have been after the point where the mold was destroyed, sadly. I'm guessing. Yeah, I 
トランクフォームできるように厳しい訓練をさせてください。Mm, let me see here. I think the, uh, well, I'll go ahead and say chug, right? Is that the accepted terminology for this version? The chug Sunstreaker actually had this sort of、uh, shape to his little cheek protector doodads here. <laughs> All right, so I guess these things, I just had to peek at that character model again. As they end before the weird ear things come out. I forgot he has sort of a chin strap there, but I think I'm going to skip that. Or I'll see what it looks like without it. Kind of make this a, a bit of a hybrid. Something that、uh, can be challenging is when you have these like、um, symmetrical elements that are, you know, like the things on the side of his head, you, and we've got each of them at a different angle, but you want them to be. Make sure they're consistent, so it can be a bit of a challenge. I think we got them pretty good. So I haven't been、uh, 
been online too much today. Any any Transformers significant uh, news, developments, whatever that I might have missed today? Hello, Benster. I suppose with it being a U.S. holiday, Hasbro probably wouldn't uh, put anything out there, but you never know when a, a leak is going to happen, apparently. All right, that feels pretty good. Let's get the... Uh, Get the chest and the uh, motor on his back squared away here. All right, sorry about that. Oh boy, what did I miss here? <laughs> Don't let Josh fool you. He's he's probably the best hugger out of uh actually no, Jack and Josh should have a hugging contest. Those two are top huggers among IDW folk for my money. <laughs> All right, this is one of those parts where the human people have asked me this before on the stream if I think of uh when I think of the pose or whatever, if I think of like a human form or a robot form first, and I usually do think of like the human form first, which can be a bad idea. So you kind of have to adjust to that. Uh, that um, the outline to fit now like a, a larger robot form. I probably, you know what, I probably should give him the chug chest. Which has kind of a raised up bit here. Yes, a poetrist. <laughs> I love that.
Fake it till you make it, man. That's how you do it. Things like this are why I usually like to have this all plotted out before I start the stream. So I'm not erasing things and trying to figure it out live here, but... Gotta keep it real though, this is how it goes, man. You gotta figure it out as you go along. So that's see. There's his shoulder coming over there, his arm, and uh, the other one would be. Looks like he's got these lines coming down the front. Auto brand, Autobot symbol in the front here. <laughs> Sorry, Josh, I haven't been keeping up with the chat here. I would have transformed. I always wanted a, uh, I know I'm such a G1 guy, it's so boring, but uh, I always wished I had a Generation 1 Sunstreaker. It's so hard to find now, and I never had one when I was a kid. A friend of mine had a, a Diaclone version. I didn't understand what that was back then, but I went over his house. He had a red Sunstreaker, and I was just confused as to why it was red and find out till later in my life what what a diaclone toy what the diaclone version was I did love Bob. How could you not, really? Going back through the uh, 
Ironhide miniseries, it'd be fun to imagine one of those Insecticons was Bob. If there was one that was like just kind of harmless in the background, he kind of survived the whole thing. Became Sunstreaker's little friend. It's funny, I originally wanted his head to be at a slightly different angle than his body, but that just kind of didn't work out. I think it's fine this way. Alright, so his shoulders had kind of a little part on the edge that went up here. I guess that was supposed to sort of replace his little pointy doodads on the G1 figure. Hey, Whirly Bird, Dark Wizard. Yeah, uh, you were one of the ones who voted for... Uh, actually, both of you, I think, voted for Sunstreaker, didn't you? It's kind of become the uh, Chug version here. IDW version, however you want to put it. not being like super strict to the character uh, animation model, but uh, that's essentially what it wound up as. The G1 model is just so simplified, the helmet design specifically. Once I started to add detail, sort of my default was this version. But I think this is a pretty well-liked, well-accepted version of Sunstreaker's design. Alright, I think we're pretty good here. What time we got? About a half hour for the sketch, not too bad. I'll try to ink old Sunny in and see how that goes. Alright, so I'll just jump in with the old uh, number one micron on the uh, on his face here.
Uh, did I watch any more Beast Wars? Uh, no, I haven't watched any since the last stream. Um, we had a busy weekend this weekend, and I didn't really have a chance to watch much during the week. So, still on, I think, I'm pretty sure the last episode we watched was the uh, second part of the uh, Floating Island deal there. We'll get there. Since Trigger's got a pretty sturdy chin down here. A lot of the original Autobots didn't have, like, uh, you know, kind of the chin detail that the later ones have, even just the little notch right there. Although, I guess the IDW version did. I'm going to leave it off there. I think he looks more uh, youthful without it. I'm going to use the straight edge just for these little cheek doodads. That's my word today, apparently. Anti slap shields. That's, that's pretty good. It's a weird word, but yeah, it works for works for a lot. It feels like kind of an old person word, but hey, that makes it appropriate for me, I guess. Thoughts on Netflix Transformers? I'm glad it exists. And there are some parts I really liked about it. Oh yeah, see you're... Uh, you're a bit younger than me, but... <laughs> There's something to be said for free, free handing these lines. Makes it feel a little more organic, but... When the line is this long, I kind of need to take the straight edge to it. 
Anybody else want to weigh in on Netflix? Uh, Transformers? I came home, my son was actually watching some Cyberverse today. It was early episodes, which I've caught part of before, but I would like to watch more of that eventually. <laughs> it did have Mirage. I'm kind of with you, Josh. I'd like to see, uh, it doesn't need to be so, so serious. I want something completely goofy, but, you know, have a little fun with it, right? <laughs> Rude bumblebee. I like that. At least it was a little bit different for Bumblebee. Whether it was your cup of tea or not, at least it was not the same old Bumblebee. At least he actually talked. I'm like sick to death of Bumblebee talking through the radio. That early episode of Cyberverse that, that my son had on was like, you know, if you've watched it, you know they don't even use actual like clips from radio or television they just kind of like make it sound like it's a clip from radio or television that is that bumblebee is communicating with and it, i don't know that's just like i'm so done with that it worked for you know the the first movie for what it was supposed to work as but oh my god enough enough Yes, the overuse of the, the models for the generics, yeah. That was uh, a little weird. I mean, I get it, but kind of like, I don't know. It was weird. I gotta track down like a soundtrack for these uh, Japanese shows. Some of the weird music they play is pretty awesome. I shouldn't say weird music, but just sort of like random songs like this one. Those lips were something. Mega lips. I wonder if now every version of Megatron will have pouty lips. Like every version of Bumblebee seems to not be able to talk. Although maybe they just broke that uh, for reals. Animated came out the same time, well not the same time, but pretty much right after the live action movie and he could talk, B could talk right away in that, right? He didn't 
he didn't communicate through the radio at all in that, right? That was a fun bumblebee, I thought. I mean, the whole series was fun. It's been a long time since I watched some animated. I should force my little man to watch it with me, indoctrinate him properly. Once the need for it as a plot device wears off, there's really no reason. It's just stupid. I mean, it's great. I love it. Oh, it's a little wonky, doesn't it? Fix it in post production. What movie never got a voice in the Bay movies? I really can't remember. I did see the fourth one, although I think my brain. Edited, it, edited most of it out as some kind of, uh, you know, defense mechanism. <laughs> I think my filter's gone today, sorry. I never saw the fifth movie, so I don't, I don't know what happened there. I think lockdown was the big baddie in the fourth, right? Because I did see, I did see that lockdown showed up with his big bounty hunting ship, and the scene where his face turned into some kind of cannon gun thing. I did see that.
I remember enjoying the third movie more than I thought I would. I'll say what I usually say when, when discussing the Bayverse films. I'm not trying to rip them, and I, I understand. I appreciate that they exist and what they did for uh, the franchise as a whole. I'm not trying to rip the Bay movies. They, they uh, work for a lot of folks. They're, they're not really my preferred version of Transformers, but I don't want to slam them either. I think Barricade might be my favorite thing to come out of the movies. I mean, for... Uh, the sake of saying something positive about the Bayverse movies, that first uh, chase scene between Bumblebee and Barricade was pretty freaking awesome, in my little tiny opinion here. Uh, yeah, that was the worst. Uh, the Romeo and Juliet law thing was, was the moment for me when it went from like, you know, okay, yeah, I, I'll tolerate, you know, the parts of Michael Bay that are not my favorite because, you know, he is good at other things. But holy crap, what, what was anybody thinking when they decided to put that in and keep that in the movie? At most, that should have been a deleted scene <laughs> that somebody discovered years later, or something. Enough about that, though. I'm trying to say positive things about the movies. The arrival to Earth scene, that was pretty great. The first moment that... Um, Oh God, I'm blanking now. It was the helicopter Decepticon. What was his name? When he shows up the military base in the very beginning and transforms for the first time, it was like, whoo, that's what I've been waiting for. Blackout, yes. And yes, the score, I will agree. The score was very good.
ッシールドの完成を急いでいた Yeah, see, we're coming up with a lot of good stuff about the movies. We're not hating on them completely. It's also probably worth mentioning that I think, for the most part, people really liked、uh, the Bumblebee movie. I know I did. So, without the Bayverse movies, we wouldn't have gotten that. One of my favorite things about the Bumblebee movie is I could take both of my kids to see it and not be worried about,、uh, you know. Some of the content being completely inappropriate. I would agree with that. I think it would be much more interesting with、uh, Michaela being the main character. Yeah, Shatter and Dropkick were great. Poor Cliff Jumper, though. Why Cliff Jumper? Why does it always have to be Cliff Jumper? It's a hard, hard luck little bot. Recent versions, at least. He did survive the、uh, 86 movie, though, although he kind of like faded into obscurity. Does anybody remember? Was he in、um, any season three episodes? He did escape along with Jazz, and of course, Jazz showed up in a few episodes. But Cliff Jumper, I don't actually recall seeing in any, any season three episodes. Although, once again, it has been a very long time since I watched those. Yeah, poor Cliff has become a meme. <laughs> yeah, Angela Bassett is kind of a powerhouse. It's like a pretty great、uh, casting choice.
Kind of surprising, really, but definitely awesome. Thank you, Demiraz. Did you know that or did you look that up? Good old Wikipedia. Right, in Prime he was The Rock, right? They probably only afford The Rock for, was it two episodes or just one episode? No, it was, it didn't last long. I think it was just the first episode, right? Sorry for the spoilers for anybody who hasn't watched it. Right, I did remember that about Casey Kasem had a uh, legitimate gripe with um, uh, what you just typed there. There was a serious uh, stereotype issue with um, the name of a uh, fictional location somewhere in the Middle East which I won't say, but uh, I did remember that. I, it didn't connect in my brain that that would have been the reason that Cliff Jumper didn't appear again, but that would make total sense. Yes. Yeah, back in the day, jazz was, like, used in everything. It was always jazz that was sort of, you know, it was like the cookie crisp thing. And the, uh, I don't know, I, you seem to see jazz pop up everywhere. Appropriately, I might add. But yeah, now he's kind of a, just a background character. Or like the, he'll show up later character. Why is the left corner of the chest plate missing the side of it and the right quarter has it? This is kind of, you know, let me get my pencil here. 
So if it comes down like that here, it would come down like that here. This is mostly obscured. Might actually see a little bit of it there. But it's pretty much obscured by the front. I have to say, even being kind of the jazz fanatic that I am, I don't really have um, many of the recent jazz figures. I think the last one I got was the, um, well, Chug, I guess you would say. I don't remember which generation that was, but I ha actually have him on a shelf over to my right here. I thought that was a nice figure. But I did not get the Combiner Wars jazz. I was not really a fan of that mold. Um, and there was one after that too, wasn't there? Generations, yes. Speakers in the doors. And I have the G2 version of that too, which I, I thought was really cool. Yeah, the Flame Toys one, the one that you posted on my page last week, that thing's pretty sick. At least it looks that way. That's right, there is a wheelie repaint of that, isn't there? I forgot about that. Was that a collector's club thing? Yeah, like a bright orange version of that mold. Kind of weird. I do have, there was, um... I forget the name. Is it like Treadshot or something? There was a BotCon use of that mold for the Shattered Glass. Not the not the original Shattered Glass set, but um, like a follow-up Shattered Glass. It had Metal Hawk over Overlord in the box set. Josh Perez colored that box. That was the uh, the one BotCon box art thing that I got to do, which was fun. It was one of my uh, sort of like career goals was to do box art for a figure. And BotCon was a good way for me to do that since most of the Hasbro box artists, well now they go through Volta, but before that they wanted their artists to do the full uh, full color art themselves, which isn't really my game. Just let everybody look at the back of my hand there. That's no fun. All right, they did a stepper out of that mold as well, didn't they? I do have the stepper version of, I think it's Downbeat, maybe, the third-party jazz. I do not have the actual third-party jazz. But 
that is a nice looking toy. Marcelo did it for a long time, uh, but now the, the siege and everything, he might have something to do with it, but I think it's all done through Volta, uh, whether it's him working for Volta or what, I'm not sure what the actual arrangement is. It very well may be him. Uh, hello there, Ardinzi, if I'm saying that right. All right, I'm going a little over an hour here. I gotta get the uh, these weird lines on his chest done and. Uh, And we'll add some of the heavier lines here. Yeah, Volta, I, I don't actually, you can actually find their, their website online, but they do uh, commercial art for all kinds of different uh, different things, but they are who, the, uh, they do most of the Transformers stuff now. Uh, they worked on the card game through Wizards of the Coast, you know, the trading card game, um, box art. I'm sure other stuff also. The great Sarah Peter DeRoche works uh, for them. She was uh, the project manager for a lot of the cards that I worked on. Hey, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. Yeah, it's too bad that uh, the card game ended or is ending. I had fun working on it. And, uh, yeah, it seemed like a, a fun little game. Hopefully it doesn't come off as condescending fun little game, but it, it was a neat thing to have. And, uh, I think if conventions hadn't come to a halt, we would have seen a lot of the, a lot of gaming happening, or at least some gaming happening at conventions. Right, yeah, the other mobile game did have um, some really nice art also. I think that those were all Volta. All right, I think Sonny's looking appropriately smug here. So let's add some uh, depth with some shaded areas and yeah, look up a color reference here. Hang on. Yeah, 
All right. <laughs> Tips at making Transformers noses. Um, well, I just uh, kind of add kind of an angled structure to like the way I would draw a human nose. You know, there's really no, like, nostrils or anything like that. So, yeah, I kind of, a lot of the G1 noses would be sort of like, you know, just like this. Like a straight up angled thing, and there's your eyes. Which is a cool look, but, uh, I like to add another dimension to it and have it, uh, you know, because if you're drawing a human nose, let's see, if I were drawing a human nose, it would be like, you know, you'd have the kind of the nostrils on the side here. So, essentially, I kind of just have this part of the nose angled and just draw a straight line down there like this kind of follow the angle of how like a human nose would go. That's kind of how I do it. But everybody does it a little different. Ah, thank you. I appreciate that. Got the puns. Got the puns going here. All right, so his helmet is uh, mostly black. So usually I do the shadow on the underneath portion of everything, and this won't be any different. So any of the black surfaces that are. Uh, On the underside of them, I'll pretty much darken them in completely. And uh, I'm going to go with the, the right, our right, his left side of the helmet, sort of in shadow here. But not completely. I'll leave it uh, A little bit sort of angled where the shadow falls. See so this version of Sunstreaker. Ah, uh, yeah, interesting. So G1 has yellow hands. IDW has. Well, this version has black hands, so we'll, we'll roll with that. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, this part I think is black, his little shoulder bits there. And the windshield is black. That's, I think that's good. Well, I'm glad if I can help anybody out. The joy of drawing Transformers should be shared by everyone. <laughs> Back to noses a lot of times, uh, I noticed, I'm pretty sure Milne was the one who started this, the under, underside of the nose a lot of time will be just darkened in, so, but since I do this weird angle, a lot of times what I will do is darken in one side of it completely, and on the other side, skip ahead a little bit, I'll do a little, uh, kind of line shading there, kind of adding a different value to each side. I know there have been some official how to draw books done. I believe Nick contributed pretty heavily to that. Uh, I think there's one with Guido as well. I bet uh, Zombie Prowl will have the info on that one. But yeah, maybe it's time for another one. Personally, I would love to see more of uh, Guido doing live art. It's one of one of the few. Um, artists that I haven't had a chance to meet yet but uh, you know I love his work and one of the things I, I feel about his work and uh, hopefully it's you know not taken the wrong way is he just makes it look so easy like for all I know he might be might be struggling at the board for you know a significant amount of time trying to get things just right but to me it looks like it just makes it look so easy. So I'd love to watch him do it live. <laughs> well, it's all perspective, I guess. Sometimes it feels easy, sometimes it feels like a challenge.
Another one of my fellow uh, artists I feel that way about is uh, Sarah. Again, once again, Sarah, like, her work is just, uh, I don't know, so smooth and nice and clean. And it just looks like... I've never watched her work, although I have met her. But I, I've never actually watched her work. But it, it she makes it look easy. Her work looks excellent. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know, she might, same thing, she might uh, stress over it or whatever, but it just looks so good, and it looks, she makes it look easy, I guess. I should probably do a side swipe that's like uh, a mirror version of this. Or not, who knows. Maybe next week. I forgot, I don't want to throw that in shadow over here. I've actually been meaning to draw a side swipe for a while. I'd like to do more of a upper body shot of actually both of these guys for, uh, you know, a sketchbook thing, like a Marvelous Mechs type of thing at some point. I'm not there right now. Let's see. Do a little shiny bit here. If anybody's watched Headmasters, one lesson <laughs> you can take from that show is don't make friends with Chrome Dome. If you're one of Chrome Dome's old friends, good things are not going to happen for you. Sorry for that little aside, it was just what's happening in the background. Uh, you know what, Demaraz? I I was actually thinking about that just today. Like, I might do that at some point. Right now, these pieces are part of my like. Uh, you know, I I pop them up on eBay each week after the stream, or a few days after. Um, 
So I kind of want to have a finished piece each week as opposed to something that stretches over multiple weeks. But at some point I might get to a place where I can, I can do that. Because it would be fun to do like a bigger piece and just chip away at it each week. So yeah, probably eventually. It all depends on what my work situation is, which is constantly fluctuating. One cover that I'm still waiting for uh, word on that I may or may not be able to do it. I I can't tell you what it is. Haha. <laughs> Sorry, but um, I'm really hoping that it it goes through. Just to tease you all a little bit there with something that may or may not happen. Yeah, that's the nice thing about eBay is it, it has a, a good reach to it, you know. There, there are some things that I'm not a big fan of about eBay, but one thing I do like is definitely the fact that it, you know, it gets exposure all over the world and uh, you know people anywhere can bid and most places you can ship to still <laughs> although right now I think there are still a few places that because of the pandemic I can't ship to but for the most part you can make the artwork available anywhere Actually, have the the Leo Zach from last week is up there right now, along with a couple other things. We'll see what happens with that. I was curious to see if somebody over in the the market that uh, Asian market that got the Victory cartoon would bid on it. Although I'm not sure if any of those countries are which countries, if any, are on the current list that I can't ship to. All right. Overlooked Autobot. I would agree with that, actually. Hmm. 
when I posted on Twitter, I was asking for a legacy character. And I'm pretty sure I got the term right. It's like one a, a character that, you know, is pretty much an original from, uh, you know, 84 to, you know, 86 or 87, but that has gone through multiple generations. Sunstreaker, I think, does get a bit overlooked. It is interesting how Sideswipe does exist without Sunstreaker in a lot of a lot of versions. Maybe a bit unfortunate. Warpath and Power Glide. I did do a, uh, a Power Glide not too long ago. There were some really nice. Uh, colored versions that came out of that too. Was it you did one, didn't you, Dark Wizard? I think that was you. Uh, a few people colored that one in. It was some really nice ones. Anyway, Warpath. There's a new toy for Warpath coming out. It looks pretty cool. I M O. On the list, the never ending list. Why do the lists never, never seem to get smaller? <laughs> the list just grows and grows and grows. All right, time's sort of getting a little short here, so I better speed things up a little bit. I'll uh, add some weight to the lines around the edge here. Clean it up a little bit, add a little more line shading here and there, and then uh, call it. straight lines we are overdue we were talking about that earlier we are overdue for a nice a nice jazz figure
Yeah, Corinne, I love seeing that jazz emote. I actually don't even know how to do that myself, but I'll figure it out at some point. <laughs> It is to me. It's almost criminal there that there's no um, masterpiece jazz. Although, I suppose if if you ask me, the uh, original toy is a masterpiece in itself. But out of all the characters that we've gotten, I feel like Jazz is definitely overdue for a masterpiece toy. I understand the licensing issues, but just because I understand it doesn't mean I have to like it. Uh, yeah, jazz is the the Christmas ornament. That one I don't uh, probably won't be investing in. I don't. I haven't uh, gone out of my way to get any of those. Just gonna hang my G1 toy on the tree. Just kidding. For me, the tank mode works for Megatron. There, there's obvious uh, issues, especially in the United States with a gun toy so I understand the need to change it you know I, I'm I've got my Megatron gun toy so you know I don't you know have a burning need for one but I understand why they change it to the tank for me the tank feels like a natural um, evolution for Megatron's alt mode. Oh my god. Jazz in the nativity scene. Goodness. Now that would be something. Yeah, really, Megatron's alt modes in different uh, versions have been kind of all over the place. I mean, Optimus is almost exclusively some sort of truck. Whether you got R.I.D. 2001 where it's a fire truck, or I, Cybertron was supposed to be some sort of fire truck-ish thing, right? But uh, he's always a truck, for the most part. 
But Megatron, he's kind of all over the place. That's probably because they, they can't sell a gun, a gun toy, or at least a realistic looking gun toy. I actually liked the the classics Megatron, that weird Nerf gun he turned into. It was kind of silly, but I kind of liked it. It was a fun, uh, fun transformation, I thought. Yeah, animated Megatron was nice, I thought. Alright, so we get the chromed out uh, engine thing here. I'm just going to add a little bit of shine to it. Nothing too dramatic, just to kind of give a hint of what's going on back there. Kind of add a little bit of a kind of as if his head is casting a bit of a shadow on the back there. I'll just take advantage of the texture of the kind of frayed, dying brush pen. I can get some nice. Nice texture out of it. Oh, we were just uh, discussing Wheelie earlier. At least a uh, one of the toys, semi-recent toys. All right, I'm gonna throw in some uh, little line shading here before we call it. I think overall, not too bad for. Uh, Starting from scratch here tonight. Thanks to everybody who uh, helped with the suggestions. This was Sunstreaker, I don't want to really scuff him up. A lot of times when I draw Transformers, I'll uh, add some dings and dents and scuff marks and stuff. But uh, with Sonny's reputation here, I think we'll keep him pretty clean.
It was that creaky chair again. Color next. Uh, color is not typically my specialty, so I usually put it out on social media for uh, anybody who wants to take a crack at it can, uh, can give it a shot. Uh, the ones that may or may not wind up in uh, potential sketchbook sequel, Marvelous Mechs Volume 2, uh, those I would color in, in kind of a retro style. But uh, Sonny here would not be uh, one of those. Uh, he would not be a candidate for that, it, like this, really. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for uh, everybody's nice colors on these. I really love seeing what, what you all come up with. I'm going to call old uh, Sonny here. He's looking, uh, looking pretty spiffy. Throw a little signature down here. Let me, uh, let me uh, take a good look at him real quick. Not too shabby for a night's work. Typically, the those of you who are here every week know the but know it already. But for anybody who is new to the stream, typically I'll do more of a an upper body shot of the robot rather than just kind of a head and shoulders shot. But um, either way, if anybody wants to color it, they're more than welcome. I will upload it to my Twitter, which is. Uh, KCW collar at KCW collar, all one word. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in coloring it, check it out there. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me for the stream tonight. This was fun. I will do another one next Monday. And um, yeah, hope everybody has a great week. And um, I'll catch you later. Whoa, check that out. Nice. Uh, got all three of those going, Crin. Very good. <laughs> Love it. All right. Take care, everybody.